Good afternoon, beloved friends. This is another little video snippet from myself and Pete. And this one is titled, The Light and the Dark. The Innocence and the Shadow. And as you can see, we are in the right place. <laughs> I am in the light. And Pete is... <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> if anyone knows us well, you will know that it is not what it appears to be. We are very good at being in both qualities. Mm. And if um, hopefully those of you have been here and those who are going to come here, they recognize where we're sitting. We often sit here when yeah. people are eating breakfast on the table over there. Um, we're often sitting here drinking our coffee, eating a quick bite of something or other. So, yeah, part of this video is to, to show you, you know, this is, this is where we live and this is how we live. And on that light and dark thing, I like, I like the word appearance there because light mm -hmm. appears to be what we're supposed to want and darkness is, appears to be that which we try to minimize or ignore or put, put aside or... Project out. Yeah, or suppress in some way or other. But the lightness is never really the full light, and the darkness is never what it appears to be either. So we're uh, very up subject. Yeah. Uh, one of those subjects that needs revisiting every now and then, not just by us, but by, by everyone, whether, a, uh, you know, single or in a couplage <laughs> of some kind. <laughs> New word. <laughs> couplage. It may sound like train, tra train cars. <laughs> So, beloved friends, uh, I'll just share a little bit, if I may, uh, about this next month coming up, September. I feel very much it's going to be epic. But I'm not going to go into that now. Um, but what I'm going to share is um, the light and dark contrasts that I've been experiencing in these last days. Next month, I'm going to have to be really A-OK -okay with climbing, abseiling, descending into potholes, maybe going in by myself, or first. So these last days, I have been confronted with intense physical fears. Fear of death is the obvious one. Fear of slow dying. Fear of painful dying. Fear of being lost and not being found. Mm. Fear of abandonment, falling, getting trapped, stuck, caught. Yeah, you name it. Pete mm. and I have been out and about in the caves, on the cliffs, down holes, up crevices, <laughs> through canyons, uh, sleeping outside, being absolutely munched Stop. by every type of insect imaginable everything in our faces mm. and when I'm put under pressure like that <laughs> very incredible shadows come out mm. it's the survival shadows they're really very very mean very embodied and you can hope to disguise them when they're there mm. and whilst we've been going through all of this We've been reading. Do, 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 do. Mm. Read it to you. Oh, oh this book uh, called *The Gene Keys* by uh, Richard Richard Rudd, an old friend of Fania's, apparently. Um, simply, as I put a post out today, the single most important book I've ever read, and we're avidly reading through sections of it. Absolutely. As you, can, as you can guess, we actually absolutely love and adore this area. And we're out, always out looking for new caves. We're, we're you know, eagerly scouring over maps for... And any... going into the shadow. Oh, can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking for new caves and routes for future tours and just for our own sake, because we love it anyway. Mm. But of course, in the darkness of old caves and old castles, there's, there's this shadow aspect of what it means to be human. And Richard here 
has done the most enormous work on cataloging um, the 64 human gene keys and their associated shadows, which is which he goes into some detail about. Is mm. my gabbing on? Right? No, just okay. loving you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even the shadows. <laughs> he, he he quite in depthly goes into the shadows of each of our eleven personal gene keys, um, with a view of understanding how we've been mm. when mm. unconscious. Mm. And a very important part of that for me is that we inherit directly from our mothers especially their particular way of being with life because we've literally been in them from conception for nine months and then we're in their um, aura as it were mm. for our early life we we literally take on their way of seeing the world at a DNA at a genetic level we cannot not be any other way and so it's, it's sad for those mothers out there because there's such a heavy burden upon your shoulders with reference to your children because quite literally our mothers affect the first 21 years of our lives and how we meet the world mm. 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 so reading the shadows is damning stuff you realize my god yeah i absolutely have or have had that mm. and then realizing that's when we're unconscious mm. and what we're doing is waking ourselves up and waking each other up mm. to the gifts that are also part of each gene key yeah. and it's in there we start to see yeah we've been on this journey a while and we can actually see progress in ourselves and especially each other mm -hmm. amazing stuff what I love about the gene keys now that I'm doing it with Pete because mm. I uh, went through it a few years ago with myself when unconscious so you know Pete and I we've only been together a year so it's still very new <laughs> <laughs> but at the beginning I was convinced that Pete's shadows or shadow elements, I was convinced he kind of did them on purpose, just to annoy me, <laughs> on purpose. And that he'd figured out quite quickly exactly where to uh, trigger me off in some kind of unknown or forgotten about fear. And now that I read the gene keys, because what we do is we read one another's hologenetic mm. profile to each other mm. throughout the day. As I'm reading Pete's shadows, my heart is opening in complete compassion mm. because I'm recognizing them and realizing there's not a lot he can do about this. Mm. This is his genetic profile, his makeup, his nature. Um, and so when I see his shadow, because he hardly ever goes into shadow these days, <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> when I see his shadow, I look at it now with a neutrality but warmth and go, wow, look at that phenomena over there. That is the such and such jinky. And it's now, I, it's now just part of his design feature. It's not going to last. I know he's reaching for his gift, which mm. is the second stage, and his city, which is the final stage. I know he will be throwing everything at the shadow to embrace it and mm. raise it up to the gift and city level as soon as he possibly can. And of course, vice versa, he's reading mine, recognizing it mm. brilliantly, and they're just not personal anymore. Yeah. 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 So it's actually very heart opening. Yeah. And you know, once we get a sense of one another's gift and city in the right way and in the right tone of voice mm -hmm. <laughs> and with the right mm -hmm. facial feet mm -hmm. gestures, we will say, sweetie, remember the gift part that goes with this? Maybe you might want to contemplate reaching out to that one. Mm. I haven't dared say that to him yet. 
he was pretending I not think, to see him. I think he's been brave enough to say it to me. Mm. That's why one of his ears is missing. <laughs> no, Picasso moment or what? <laughs> yeah, quickly a bit of a plug for Richard, although yeah. I don't really know him yet. Um, but you can online do your gene, gene key hologenetic profile. It's quite a, quite a wonderful in-depth mm. um, experience. Um, and the, this thing about shadow and light, this video is kind of mm. tongue-in-cheek about, it's actually, no, there is no complete shadow. Mm. Actually, the shadows and recognising them is the gift or leads to the gift. You cannot go to the gift without going through the shadow. Mm. Same with in, being in the caves and stuff. Mm. We went in the other day to, for the first time, to my favourite and first cave in this area with Anaya. Mm. And it is a bit scary at first going into a cave. Like, what? who in their right mind goes into the dark, into this scary place? Because it's such a thing in our backbone that caves are scary. But actually going in them, the things that made them scary once, like wolves or bears or whatever else, they don't exist any longer in this area. So there isn't any threat in that sense. No. Or, but still, there's this fear of the darkness, which is also important to kind of mm. be compassionate about. Mm. But by going in there, spending some time grabbing the torches, making a brew, and going further into the back, and finding these hidden galleries and stuff, mm. the darkness the fear of it goes over from being this terror to being such amazement that there can be so much beauty unknown underground yeah. and literally kilometers worth of crystals and frozen fountains and <coughs> reflective diamond-like features that are just absolutely stunning and the realization these features have been created over millions of years just like our fear structures yeah. have been created as humans over millions of years. Mm -hmm. We have no choice as long as we stay in the apparent dark. Mm -hmm. And I love, I put a little post this morning, I love doing this journey together with Anaya mm -hmm. because Anaya for me is this, this beautiful reflective surface that reflects me back at me and enables me to see the parts and pieces I either can't on my own or don't want to on my own. And getting the wording right, you know, asking the questions to the other from a clear, compassionate and supportive place gives me the opportunity to, to really get at some of these things that have been hidden away for all my life. Mm -hmm. And with love from both of us, kind of reaching for more of an understanding about them, mm. you know, and and then seeing throughout the day as other events happen, other things, other moments, seeing, all oh, right, I don't need to be re reactive in that way because I can see there's such and such coming up in Anaya. So it's actual real stuff that's immediately applicable mm. in the living of an ordinary life. Mm. Why don't you sit here? I don't need to, I'm in the light as much as the dark. Oh, okay. Very spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, big yeah. recommendation. Yeah. But also, if you don't go that way, working with a beloved or potential future beloved in the shadow arena mm. brings so much light into the beingness of, of being. Mm. That sounded very spiritual. I have no idea what I just said then. <laughs> mm. and that's a great thing, a kind of interesting thing. You can't appreciate, you can't see the shadow really from within it. You need to be mm. able to get out of it to be able to look look down on mm. where you've come from to mm. appreciate it mm. wonderful and, and also the humility when you're mid shadow active mm. to stop and to reach for mm. my favorite word my innocence it's like you know when I'm mid shadow when I'm mid ranting mid fear mid serious mm. or dull uh, stop pause take a breath 
reach for my humility. Mm. Yeah, something strange happening along Some the road. Some weird, weird neighbour thing going on. But quick, last thing from me, men. Um, what's helping me a lot is recognising my inner boy, my inner Pete involved in all this. He is the key. Um, by actively embracing him, it's, it's he that's kind of like the holder of these shadows. And rather than trying to take away the shadows, it's embracing him as though he were a five-year-old boy and I was walking hand in hand with him. Like, you know, what is it that he didn't get that he needs from me, that he's asking? And if I don't listen, he kicking up a fuss until he gets hurt. Mm. Beautiful mm. inner child work in amongst all this shadow work mm. as well. Mm -mm. Yeah. Shutting up now. <laughs> mm, the Jesus thing's coming on well, isn't it?